So before I get into any more of the video, if you guys are interested in the algorithms behind this or how any of this is done, as well as some resources, you can actually find it on a GitHub set up by a guy named Sebastian Mack or Mackey. And uh, it's all open source there. You'll be able to find a bunch of cool stuff and it should be pretty easy to implement. It's like 20 lines of code to render. It's super basic. Uh, definitely a very good read. I recommend visiting that. I'll leave a link in the description so you can do so. So if you want to skip ahead to when the project is finished, there will be timestamps below. You can do that. I'm going to start the video in the beginning with what I started with, uh, which in this case is just simple GDI. I did use draw lines here in this uh, project in the beginning, but I should have actually used fill rectangle. It would have been a lot faster. But this is just testing anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Um, as you can see, it's pretty slow. This was just uh, also the slowest algorithm on the GitHub just to test it out. Um, the next thing I did, though, is I actually worked on a faster method using the optimized method on GitHub. And I also implemented um, a direct 2D framework as well as a GDI framework. Uh, but there's not really much performance difference because you're not, th a lot of this is CPU based. So Direct2D doesn't really uh, help you much there because it uses a lot of, it, it can use GPU, but it doesn't really use much here. So here is um, with the optimized GDI code and you'll see it renders a lot faster but it's still relatively slow. There's still optimizations to be made. And I made those optimizations in the next file where I did everything I could to make it run faster and I was able to achieve pretty good frame rates. Um, added the ability to look around, to look up and down. Um, looking up and down in this uh, algorithm, this engine, uh, it just moves the horizon up and down. It's not, uh, it's not a true 3D world, but it still looks pretty convincing when you're playing it, so it's pretty cool. But... This is the just normal version with optimized code. There's some terrain collision, so the camera doesn't go below it. Not much to see here. The next version, I decided to start messing with the lighting. Uh, the ultimate goal here is to build like a cool dungeon crawler RPG type game. So obviously you need to have some darkness. And that worked out pretty well. It was pretty easy. Just um, apply a darkness uh, floating uh, modifier, floating point mod modifier. So... The more distance you have, the brighter it is. Um, the next version is the same thing, but now it's a light source, so it's a candle. So instead of having a darkness modifier, it's a candle modifier. And there's just some random flickering and stuff in there. I mean, if you're gonna, if you're gonna crawl through dungeons, you gotta have some kind of light source, and a candle seemed like a pretty easy one to me. Um, but I want to start forming the 3D world now, so I actually have to take uh, two different voxel terrains mirror them on top of each other so i have the ceiling being drawn and the floor being drawn and this was a test to do that and you'll see some problems here where the top is actually being drawn uh, on top of the bottom and that's because there's no z buffer currently but i do implement that later um, this is where i've loaded up my own custom map to give you an idea of what it, what it would look like so now the the cave system is starting to form you can kind of see what it's going to look like and it's it's pretty convincing so far but again there's still no z buffer so if you ever get to a point uh like right up here you'll notice right away there's some weird stuff going on where the top is being drawn uh, above the bottom and it's uh, very unconvincing doesn't look very good so next i added the z buffer and now objects are being drawn correctly so things that are close to you are being drawn first and things further away are being drawn uh, behind it and you can see here instead of having weird artifacts in the ground everything looks pretty good it looks like normal terrain you can see the floor instead of the ceiling here uh, it's a little bit laggy because i made an error in this earlier uh, uh, z buffer code but i do fix that later but um, otherwise it looks pretty good but there's not much else to see here so move on to the next one which is where i added some entities um, you can look around the mouse now so it's a it feels more like a like a first person game instead of some weird turning one and uh so here's some just random mouse entities they um get smaller the further they are away and they they do light up correctly with the the lighting as well which is cool and the rest of the map got a little bit changed here i started messing with some more stuff so Here's um, 
some of my debug stuff and this is basically a visual representation of what the z-buffer looks like so in this case white is closer but you can change it so that black is closer like this and it it helps to kind of see depth information a lot easier this way I also have another debug mode which shows you floor and ceiling as well as the intersection points and um, the background so red is everything that's not being drawn um, this is the current version of the game that I'm working on and here's like a testing map that where I'm just testing like a scale and um, textures and stuff and here I've added a, a full bright mode uh, but you can switch back to the candle mode as well and again it, it looks um, pretty good it lights up the entities but I thought I didn't want to end there I also wanted to add a flashlight uh, just because I, I just really like flashlights they're pretty cool it looks um, weird in the candle mode it's really not meant for candles but if you turn all the lights off then it looks a lot better so it looks much more like a flashlight here and then you have the low power high power version and uh, I thought it just looked pretty cool it's pretty convincing it uh, also works on entities lights them up of course and overall it's just pretty fun to mess with so another cool thing I added was the ability to actually paint onto the map but it uses the perspective so uh, when you move away it looks a little bit different because it, those other pixels are not actually being drawn but it's still a really cool feature and uh, it's just kind of fun to mess with really but another cool thing I added was map transitions so if you want to swap maps I added a cool little effect so it kind of shimmers out and then it's it puts you onto a certain position and now the the next map actually gets formed around you so the current one gets transformed into the next map and uh, i thought that looked really cool it's just a lot of fun i mean there's there's really no need for it but it just looks really cool and i like how it um it, the colors uh, swap and the height maps all swap around then the final result is a completely different map which is pretty sweet so in this one you can use your flashlight as well obviously and uh, it looks a lot better in the cave I think it's a bit spookier I suppose but uh, just fun to mess around with and here's some painting again with perspectives it's kind of cool because uh, when you actually look inside it's it's like uh, it's like it just got blasted right in and just the outline was shaped and here's another instance of that where it just the because you're painting the perspective the the way it looks is a lot cooler when you change is it just it looks totally random but from one specific spot it would look like a perfect circle or you know painted anyway and here's another feature where you can uh, change the current ceiling to match the current floor so that everything is perfectly mirrored um, it's just for fun really but also I added the um, ability to add rocks uh, you know or anything else really randomly to the terrain by simply adding um, some height map and color data to it uh, yeah I'll demonstrate kind of what it looks like you can just paint them anywhere doesn't matter if it's the ceiling or the wall you just press button and it starts drawing rocks randomly wherever your mouse is on the world and it shows up on the height map of course and there's really no end to how many you can add until it gets uh, too crazy looking, I suppose. And then obviously, since the the way that it's drawn makes it look kind of pixely, you can actually upscale it, and it looks fine for the most part. Sprites look a little bit weird, but... So even though I'm actually rendering internally on, on an 800 by 600 resolution, but I can upscale it to a higher resolution, and it looks pretty similar. And it runs uh, exactly the same, which is nice. So here's basically just that running on a bigger screen. It's a little bit easier to see things. Oh, I also unlocked the FPS here. So this is running um, as fast as the program can render it with one core anyway. So uh, it's not too bad, really. You can see a lot more details in the bigger rooms with the, the upscaled screening looks a little bit better and the transition I did earlier you can actually stop it 
at any point you don't have to do the entire thing so you can kind of get a good feel for what the floor and the ceiling looks like but that's pretty much it um fun little project to work on i'm not sure if i'll work on it much more um there's a bunch of other stuff i want to do right now and I, I feel like i've had as much fun as i can with this project but like i said i'll leave a link to the github in the description i'll also leave um a link to some source code for a, a basic example of this so that you guys can can run the algorithm yourself and mess around with it but uh, thanks for watching the video i hope you guys enjoyed and i hope that it inspired some people to mess around with auto hockey and make some stuff